First of all, I'd like to say good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this webinar is going to be recorded. And uh, as a follow up to this webinar, we're going to send you the recording uh, in the email. So first of all, I'd like to extend a warm welcome and express my gratitude to each of you for joining us today. It's a pleasure to have you with us for this webinar. Today, we are diving into an important topic of navigating data privacy compliance in North America with Data Privacy Manager. We will explain why evaluating the maturity of your privacy program is important and how our state of privacy assessment methodology, better known as SOPA, can help. Even more, we'll be focusing on the automation of your privacy program and how implementing Data Privacy Manager software platform can help. Throughout the session, I encourage you to make the most out of the Q&A feature. It's a great way to engage with us. The duration of the webinar is approximately 45 minutes and we'll be dedicating the last 10 minutes to answering your questions. So please feel free to share your thoughts and questions as we go along. Additionally, to make our session even more interactive. We'll be rolling out a poll with a few questions at some point during the webinar, which I will announce. Once again, thank you for being here and I hope you find today's webinar both informative and helpful. So let's get started. First of all, I would like to introduce Timothy Miller. Tim is an experienced professional in the field and uh, he is our business development manager for North Americas. So Tim, please go ahead and introduce yourself for the audience. Thank you. Uh, hi everyone, uh, Tim Muller here from New York City. Uh, thanks for joining today's webinar. Um, I work with leg our legit North America clients to solution their privacy and compliance challenges. My background is in management consulting. My focus is in helping data privacy officers, compliance managers, IT professionals turn risk and compliance into opportunities. My background is in uh, data governance, risk management, organizational alignment, and strategic initiatives. Um, I am also a certified governance fellow with a solid understanding of regulatory, ethics, and privacy issues. As each of us here know, our data privacy laws are, they're evolving. And that said, I am confident that Legit's Data Privacy Manager can simplify your data protection and compliance processes. Uh, also would like to add that DPM, it's a mature um, privacy automation platform and it's recognized by Gartner, Forrester, Forrester Wave and TechNow. Again, thanks for your time today. I look forward to the possibility of working with you. Tim, thank you so much. It's uh, always a pleasure working with you. So uh, we can move on. And uh, what I'd like to do is also introduce myself for the people who don't know me on the webinar. My name is Marian Bracic and I'm the CEO at Legit. My background is mostly in data. So for the past 20 years, I've been working with data uh, in data management, data engineering, data governance. And I've seen how really good companies and organizations are at collecting data and processing data and doing analytics and profiling. Uh, and in the same time, they are very bad at actually protecting privacy and personal data. And this is the reason why at Legit, we started developing Data Privacy Manager back in 2017 before GDPR was introduced in the EU. And um, from that time on, our vision was always to protect people's privacy in this digital data-driven world, always changing. And our mission was and still is to help companies effectively integrate data privacy into their everyday business through automation at scale. So our product, our flagship product is Data Privacy Manager software platform. Uh, we have been developing the platforms uh, for a long time now. And we have always tried to solve real life challenges and help companies build a robust automated privacy program and really help them protect personal data and people's privacy. 
and in the same time, minimize privacy compliance risks. So Data Privacy Manager today is a comprehensive SaaS software platform, which uh, is designed to provide automation and governance of the privacy program. We have four modular products and uh, we'll be diving into the details, explaining from high level what are all the capabilities of Data Privacy Manager and how it helps. We are a European company and we are expanding our footprint in the North Americas as we speak. Currently we have over 200 enterprise customers in over 40 countries worldwide. And everything we do is our own proprietary technology. D DPM is an AI based software platform. And the AI that we use is again, our own proprietary technology. We never send personal data to any other third party. So what we try to do is we try to build and maintain a very secure and robust platform, always protecting personal data. So we've been recognized by the leading analyst companies such as Gartner, Forrester, and Quadrant. And uh, currently we work with companies coming from different industry verticals. And as you might imagine, privacy compliance is relevant to any company processing personal data as different data protection regimes and regulations uh, really apply to anyone processing personal data. And today, every company, no matter the industry, actually processes a lot of personal data. It's just the way things are. And this is why we have seen customers in different industries actually having pretty similar problems, similar challenges, and we use the same principles of privacy protection to help all of them. Our typical users of the platform would either be the privacy team, so it can be a data protection officer, privacy operations, privacy compliance. It can also be marketing, HR, and uh, people profiling customer data. So mostly related to consent management and processing personal data based on individuals' opt-ins. And we also have users coming from the data governance area. So mostly uh, data stewards, uh, chief data officers. So any role coming from the data governance sector where it's really important to keep track of the life cycle of personal data from the point where you as the organization collect personal data from the individuals up to the point where it's your obligation to minimize your personal data footprint in the company and to actually remove personal data once you lose business and legal justification for storing and processing personal data. So as today we are diving into the topic of both automating your privacy program, but also evaluating the maturity of your privacy program. I think it's important to understand our common implementation approach when it comes to using Data Privacy Manager. So during the webinar, I will guide you through um, all the phases. So we have a five-phase five approach starting with phase zero, which is called State of Privacy Assessment or SOPA, phase one being data discovery, phase two, privacy program management, phase three, consent mastering, and phase four, data removal. Each phase addresses specific challenges in achieving robust data privacy framework, ensuring compliance with regulatory demands and building trust with key stakeholders. And uh, we will explore how these phases work together to provide a comprehensive privacy solution, helping you overcome obstacles and simplify your compliance journey. And before moving, moving on to explain 
what is phase zero, state of privacy assessment and how it's done. I would like to explain the reason why we introduced SOPA in the first place. And I think it's, it's uh, an interesting story. So as a software vendor, we were always firmly fixed on developing the best data privacy software out there. We talked to potential clients, jazzed up about showing them all the cool things that our software can do, starting with the magic of data discovery and how we classify personal data using artificial intelligence and provide super fast search of any personal data stored anywhere within the organization. And uh, then we would uh, show them all the capabilities of privacy program management, the automation of records of processing activities, risk assessments, third party management, data subject request management, and so on. And then we would speak about managing consents and preferences, which is a wide topic covering marketing activities, omni channel communication, analytics, and customer profiling and all the needed capabilities to provide one central source of truth for, uh, for end-to-end -end automation of the, of the consent management and of collecting consents and personal data from the individuals. And just when we thought we had them uh, at automated data removal, the deletion and anonymization of personal data from all the systems and orchestrating it, then we'd hit a snack. It turned out the world of privacy management had grown legs. It became very complex. And we were meeting folks who didn't have the full picture, the what's and where's of tackling privacy management head on. So there we were ready to go, but without a clear starting line. Plus, let's be honest, almost every company out there, every company we chatted with had done their homework. They had their gap analysis in hand with all those boxes ticked, contracts, contracts, policies, procedures, documentation, you name it. But, and it's big, but there was a missing piece. So the real deal, the practical side of actually putting all those organizational and technical measures, putting them into play was often just not there. And that was our light bulb moment. So we realized we, need, we needed to focus on assessing how well these measures were actually being implemented. And before rolling out our software, we needed to lay down a clear plan for our customers, a roadmap of sorts, to help them navigate through the implementation process. And this is why we introduced SOPA. So SOPA isn't just about pointing out what's missing. It's about providing clarity on where to start and what to tackle first. It's about looking beyond the paper-based compliance and ensuring that the fundamental ground level practices are solid. So before we talk about all the amazing features our software has, let's first talk about getting the basics right, making sure the foundation is strong with state of privacy assessment, SOPA. Once that's sorted, everything else falls into place much more smoothly. So what is SOPA? State of privacy assessment is more than just a service. It's an independent external assessment crafted meticulously by the dedicated professionals at Legit and our esteemed partners. Our goal is to provide you with a clear objective insight into the privacy and data protection landscape within your organization. SOPA is not a one size fits all solution, but a tailored service package that comes in two distinct flavors to suit, to suit your organizational specific needs. First, we have the basic SOPA and you, you can think about SOPA as something you can do on an annual basis. SOPA is designed to dissect and analyze your current privacy compliance landscape, delivering a comprehensive maturity report that doesn't just highlight where you are, but also charts out a clear path forward with actionable recommendations. It's about understanding the nuances of your organization's privacy management program and empowering you to enhance it. 
And then there's SOPA plus, which is typically done in the beginning when we are just starting to work with a new customer. It takes the foundation laid by SOPA and builds upon it, offering something more, an executive summary crafted for the leadership team. So SOPA Plus is comprehensive. It provides a detailed executive presentation, a thorough list of identified risks, and most critically proposed mitigation measures. This level of detail is invaluable as it gives your leadership the information they need to make informed decisions that will safeguard your organization's future in the realm of privacy and data protection. And it also gives you something else. It gives you a tool to get the, the buy-in from the management so they really understand why they need to invest in privacy and privacy automation. Both service packages, so both SOPA and SOPA Plus, are grounded in the belief that privacy and data protection are not just regulatory checkboxes, but are core to maintaining the trust and confidence pivotal in today's digital world. So let's briefly talk about what SOPA can really, really do for you. Imagine sitting down for a coffee with someone who knows the ins and outs of privacy and data protection who can give it to you straight, where you are nailing it and where you could use a bit of boost. That's SOPA. You'll get a full picture, an objective look at your privacy setup. We are talking about a clear, honest snapshot that shows you exactly where you stand. Then there's the maturity report. You can think of it as a help checkup for your privacy practices. It's comprehensive, but it's also digestible. We'll walk you through it so you can really understand what it all means. And we won't just leave you with a list of to-dos. We give you actionable recommendations that make sense for your business. These aren't just cookie cutter solutions. They are customized practical steps you can take to really improve your privacy game and minimize your privacy compliance risks. For those who choose SOPA Plus, We've got executive summaries that cut through the noise and get down to what leaders need to know. It's about giving management the clarity and confidence to steer the ship. At Legit, we pride ourselves on being your partner in this journey. My team and I are all in when it comes to privacy protection. We are your trusted advisors and we set the standard for privacy excellence. So there's always the question why you should start with a state of privacy assessment. And as you will see later, everything we do is quite modular. We believe in think big, start small. And uh, as any other product that we have as a part of the data privacy manager platform, so is SOPA as a service package it is an optional step, so you don't have to start with SOPA, but I will tell you why this is a good idea. Conducting SOPA offers our clients a holistic overview of their privacy posture. The assessment is designed to be comprehensive, shedding light on all facets of data protection within a company. For organizations just embarking on their privacy compliance journey, SOPA Plus serves as a robust starting point, providing a detailed roadmap for implementing a robust privacy program. In contrast, the SOPA, the basic SOPA, acts as a regular health check, ensuring that privacy measures remain up-to-date and effective. The primary objective of the SOPA assessment is to pinpoint any areas of non-compliance and identify potential data protection vulnerabilities. By taking the initiative to conduct this audit, companies not only exhibit an unwavering commitment to privacy compliance and data protection, but also underline their, their dedication to maintaining the trust of their stakeholders and individuals alike. This proactive approach ensures that companies can address any weaknesses head on, establishing a robust data protection framework that instills confidence. Our team of experts will provide invaluable insights. They have a lot of experience working with a huge number of customers in different industries. 
and through their tailored recommendations, your company will be empowered to reinforce its data protection measures, ensuring both compliance and the unwavering trust of all involved parties. So as we look at how we've adapted the NIST National Institute of Standards and Technology privacy framework, think of it as tailor making a suit. You start with the best fabric, which, which in our case is the foundational principles of the NIST framework. And I'd like to say that the NIST framework is a very good tool. It's ever evolving and very comprehensive. And adapting the NIST privacy framework, our job has been to take this exceptional material and tailor it to fit the unique challenges of our customers. Now, we all know that any organization can look great on paper with all the compliance boxes checked, what we call paper-based compliance. But what happens when we move beyond the paper? This is where our adapted methodology really shines. It's designed to focus on the implementation of organizational strategies and the technical safeguards. So our primary goal is to help you transition from this paper-based compliance to something that's living and breathing within all areas of your company's privacy practices. It's about moving into a space where compliance is not just about understanding, uh, it's about operationalizing and having privacy integrated into the very fabric of your daily operations. And to do this, we've fine-tuned the NIST nice privacy framework to align it more closely with not just regulations, but with real world applications. This means placing a strong emphasis on organizational and technical security measures that are essential for protecting personal data. We are talking about creating a privacy program that's proactive, resilient, and equipped for the future, whatever the future may hold. So after completing the state of privacy assessment, the real magic begins. This is where implementing the different modules of Data Privacy Manager starts to transform and automate into your, into your privacy program. So DPM is designed as a modular solution, allowing you to select the modules most relevant to your needs first and expand with additional modules in any order you prefer. While SOPA helps us recommend priorities based on your current privacy maturity, it is also an optional phase. So the first recommended phase of actually implementing the software is data discovery. And data discovery is all about using our software platform to connect to all your data sources. And I'm talking databases, relational databases, NoSQL databases, applications, and document stores. So both structured and unstructured data sources. And once DPM connects to all your data sources, it can start scanning and discovering all personal data that you have. And after we scan the data, we use artificial intelligence to actually do the classification. So what this means is that the result of the data discovery scanning will actually be stored in the data inventory, which serves as a central repository containing information about all the personal data that, that you have scattered across the company including technical information about the data, about the location, what is the type of data, and the classification of data. So what is really the categories of personal data? Like, is it email addresses, contact information, names? Is it text number? Is it health information, political opinions, and so on? What we have also built on top of the data discovery is the capability to do an ultra fast search of personal data across your whole data landscape. And what it, this means is that you can search for specific information. It can be an email address, it can be a name, it can be a text number or a customer ID or a combination. 
and you will be able to really fast get all the results. So a list of all the documents and columns and tables and databases where this individual information is stored. We have seen customers use it to, to power their data removal program, for example, when they need to clean up their unstructured data sources. So we are speaking about millions, even hundreds of millions of documents, which we typically call dark data. Uh, and this is where companies typically don't really have a good control on, on what is the type of personal data and what is it exactly th that they have stored in those documents. So we use this technology to shine a light on the dark data and to help you discover all personal data, do the classification, and on top of this have a really fast search for individual specific data. And we have also seen a use case where companies use this technology to, to cross check against the potential data breach. So if they have information, what is the type of data that was leaked? They can actually take this data, use it to search across all their data sources and actually make sure that their systems aren't the source of a data breach. The second phase of our common implementation approach where, where we speak about data privacy manager implementation is privacy program management. And privacy program management is all about having a central cockpit of your privacy program. So putting privacy people in their correct roles. So their correct roles being able to monitor and control how personal data is being processed and protected across the company. What is sales doing with personal data? What is marketing doing with personal data? What is HR doing with personal data? What is retail doing with personal data? Are all the boxes checked in terms of whether you as a company really have a clear understanding and documentation about everything you do with personal data? Do you have a clear understanding on the whys, on the purpose? So why are you actually processing personal data? What is the lawful basis? Uh, who is the business owner? Who you are sharing data with? Who are all those third parties? Do you have active contracts with the third parties? Are they protecting your data? And then uh, processes related to the rights of the individuals in relation to the regulation and uh, the rights provided by the regulation or prescribed with the regulation. So data subject request management is the module where you can centrally integrate with different platforms and keep track of all the requests coming from the individuals and to some point, automate the fulfillment of their requests. Also, we have the central incident management where we document any discovered incident with, uh, within DPM. And we have uh, a global regulatory database. So filers, keepers, retention knowledge base is an extremely useful knowledge base used by our customers to understand their obligations when it comes to the data retention periods or retention rules. And what I mean by this is how long can you as a company actually store individuals data or how long you must store their data? What is your regulatory obligation? And this is currently a database of all, over more than 300,000 retention records where filers keepers who are our partner and the data provider actually have an army of lawyers and use artificial intelligence to scan all the laws in the world and actually actually extract retention rules and this is a database that is uh, updated on daily basis 
So as you can see, privacy program management actually consists of different modules. Each of the modules is designed to solve a specific challenge. And you as our customers can always start small, think big, and for example, start with a data subject request management module or the data processing inventory module. And then later you can expand the usage of the platform. So we, uh, in the third phase, we have the consent mastering. And I mentioned before, uh, the phase one and phase two, so data discovery and privacy program management aren't really a prerequisite to start with consent mastering. So you can actually start with phase one or start, start with phase two or start with, with phase three. What I'm showing you is just the typical uh, implementation approach most commonly used by our customers. So phase three consent mastering is all about providing an end-to-end -end automation. So from the moment when you as a company collect individuals' data and consents, when the individuals actually opt in for processing of their data, typically it can be for marketing campaigns or direct interaction between your marketing and sales and the individuals offering them new products and new services, or it can be, for example, for advanced profiling of individuals' data. Or it may be related to any process where you need to allow the individual to opt out from the process. So consent mastering is an extremely flexible solution from integration perspective. So we can plug in into your existing business processes. We never like to do a big bank approach. Um, so what we do is we actually integrate with the existing marketing platforms, analytical platforms that you have with your websites. We provide web forms and other means, means of integration. And then we build a central source of truth for consents. And this is the repository of all the opt-in and opt-out transactions, including all the personal data and metadata about the interaction, about the transaction. So that means that we provide not only a central platform for monitoring how you process personal data based on consent, but we also provide a tool for you to be able to demonstrate your compliance and to make sure that anything you do from perspective of processing individuals' data based on consent is in line with the regulation and you are able to demonstrate compliance to the regulatory authorities. Also, what we have as a part of the consent mastering uh, product is the privacy portal, which so serves as a self-service portal for the individuals where they can actually connect and they can manage their privacy settings, including managing consents and preferences, viewing uh, which data you have about them. Actually, they, they are able to download their data if you provide them with, with such an option. And they can also uh, request the fulfillment of their rights. For example, they can ask for the, their data to be deleted or they can ask uh, to access the data you have about them. And finally, this brings us to phase four, which is data removal. Now, typically data removal comes as a cherry on top of the automation of your privacy program. This means that probably you need to be aware and understand what you do with personal data, what are all the processing activities, what are the data retention periods, what are your obligation, obligations in terms of storing personal data, and what are your obligations from perspective of minimizing uh, personal data footprint in the company. So what we do with DPM is we actually keep track of all the different data flows that you have within the company. So how you actually process data, how this data flows from system to system, from application to application. Once we have this understanding, we also have the configuration of the rules. So understanding how long you are actually allowed to store personal data of an individual. So if we think about a simple example, 
if we have a bank or a financial institution that has a contract with the individual, at the point where, where this contract expires, there will be a certain data retention period defined. So say this data retention period is 11 years. Upon the expiry of the 11 years, it is the bank's obligation to actually either anonymize or delete this individual's personal data. And this is what we keep track of. We have uh, what we call data retention schedule and the data removal schedule. And once there are data removal candidates created in the data removal schedule, upon the approval of the removal, we actually orchestrate the removal. So this means that we will issue instructions to different systems, which are a part of the data flow and actually log what has been done with the data. The data is either deleted or anonymized. So this is a very important step, often neglected, uh, by a lot of uh, companies. And from technical perspective, of course, this is one of the most complicated things when it comes to automating uh, the privacy program. So what I think uh, we can do at this point, I will ask Maya if, kindly if she can uh, start the poll. So you will get a few questions and uh, it would be great if you can spare a little time and, and answer the questions. It will be very helpful to us. So uh, thank you very much in advance. Um, while you are doing this, I would uh, just briefly like to mention what makes our data privacy manager distinct. So, DPM is a cloud native platform. So it is uh, a SaaS platform. However, we understand that a lot of companies still have very firm and strict security policies, especially when it comes to cybersecurity, critical infrastructure, big financial corporations, and so on. So what we made sure is to make DPM available both in SaaS, in the cloud, but also another deployment model is uh, self-hosted DPM. That means that you can either install it in your private cloud or use it uh, on premises. Another thing which is really important is that DPM is fast and easy to implement. Uh, so this means that if we are talking about SOPA, if we are talking about data discovery implementation and privacy program implementation, we can have you using DPM and we can have you up and running in a matter, in a matter of weeks. Also, everything we do, like I mentioned in the beginning, is our own proprietary technology. We don't lean on other uh, service providers on third parties and other vendors. So we have a big R&D team and we have a big uh, research team. So we make sure to keep track of the global uh, always changing privacy regulation and actually uh, build this into the software and make sure that at all times we are actually solving real life challenges. Also, uh, I men mentioned that DPM is AI powered. So we have a lot of things coming, uh, which we can uh, think of as AI driven. Uh, so far, I think uh, the most interesting thing that we do is fully autonomous discovery and classification of personal data using our proprietary technology. Um, also, I mentioned that DPM is a modular solution and it, it really is. So this means that you can select the modules you want to use. And later on, as you expand the usage of the modules, it will, it will all come into place. So if you are using data discovery and privacy program management, so if you have both the centralized records of processing activities and initially you manually collect information from different stakeholders within the company, and then you actually configure an automated workflow. 
Later on, if you use data discovery, you will actually get the technology that will be scanning the systems and making sure that what you have in your processing activities is what you are really processing in the systems. And also the way in which we use data discovery and do the personal data classification is very unique. We have a lot of uh, scientific uh, articles published. We have a lot of scientific work done in the back end, and we have our own proprietary and unique way of doing the classification, both in the structured data sources and in the unstructured data sources. And then it all comes together uh, within the data inventory. And also our consent management module is built a little bit different than the competition in a way that everything is flexible and there really isn't a fixed structure behind it. So we use a big data, no SQL technology in the backend and we can really adapt to the different integration points. So you can collect different information uh, at the integration point. So for example, on your website, in your mobile application, on the point of sale, but it will still all come into the same repository and you will have one single view of, on all consents and the golden record when it comes to understanding the current status of consent for the individuals. So uh, I don't want to take too long as we can really talk a lot about each of the phase and each of the functionality and the capability of DPM. I think now would be a good time to uh, get the look into the questions uh, and your comments if you have them. And I will kindly ask uh, Maya to, to share the questions. Maybe if you can read them and I'll try to, to answer them as clearly as possible. Also team, if you have any comments or questions, uh, feel free to jump in and uh, I'll try to answer the questions as clearly as I can. Okay, Marian. So the first question is, uh, in your opinion, what are the most common mistakes businesses make in meeting privacy compliance requirements? Oh, I would say from my experience that they get too confident in their paper-based compliance. So, you know, by uh, creating a lot of uh, documentation, creating a lot of documentation doesn't make you uh, compliant, nor does it really minimize you know, data breach risks or risks risks from uh, not being compliant from the perspective of technical and organizational security measures and actually protecting personal data. So, so I think uh, the leaning on paper-based compliance is the most common mistake that I see in the field. Okay, the next question is, uh, what role does AI play in ensuring data privacy and managing compliance? So uh, I would say that uh, we can approach this from two angles. So uh, one would be understanding the risks that AI plays when it comes to personal data protection and privacy. And th this is a whole topic we can and probably will dedicate a specific webinar to it uh, because AI today and the, the massive development in the area of AI and uh, uncontrolled collection and usage of uh, data, including personal data for the training and testing of AI is, uh, is a huge risk. But maybe I can focus on how AI can actually help protect data. And as I was mentioning before, we do use a, a lot of AI. Um, we are planning to, uh, to roll out uh, a new uh, privacy chatbot using uh, powered by AI, which is uh, trained in helping you research and answer any questions that you have in regards to the regulation and regulatory questions. Uh, and so far we have seen that uh, a really good adoption of AI in the area of um, natural language processing and actually understanding uh, what is the type of personal data? What is personal data in context when it comes to, uh, to unstructured data sources, but also for structured data sources, not actually leaning on metadata and the old type of technologies from the 
era of PCI DSS, but also actually looking into the data, into the databases, applications, and document stores, and leaning on AI to have an automated way of doing classification of personal data. Okay, thank you. So the last question is, uh, how can tools like uh, Data Privacy Manager or Data Privacy Manager simplify compliance for businesses? Um, well, I would say that um, it uh, it simplifies uh, things a lot in a sense that um, there is uh, uh, using the software and the built-in workflows and the knowledge, um, it provides the, the decentralized privacy governance model. So you actually have the right people um, answering the right questions. So when you are collecting information about you know, understanding what you do as a company with personal data and building the privacy program, you need to talk to the right people. You need to have an up-to-date information in your records of processing activities and you need to do um, risk assessments like data protection impact assessments and legitimate interest assessments and third-party risk assessments um, regularly. So this is where software can really help because all of this is automated. And then we can, we can speak about how today everything is digitized and how most of companies really are handling large volumes of data. And... Uh, doing anything manually with large volumes of data and uh, with a huge number of systems and applications is just not possible. So I think from that perspective, there isn't any alternative to using software such as Data Privacy Manager where, when you're really serious about building and maintaining a robust privacy program within the company. Okay, Marian, those were all, all of the questions. All right, so so thank you very much. So I think uh, at this point, uh, I, I hope you have a clear understanding of how DPM can help from a high level. And this is where I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop with my presentation. I hope it wasn't too long. Uh, what we plan to do uh, together with team in the near future is organize a few more webinars on specific topics. So I think well, we need to talk about AI and privacy. We need to talk about uh, data discovery uh, in more details. I think we're also be, be organizing one about actually keeping track of the privacy program using privacy program management and consent management and also a dedicated webinar on automating data removal as this is a big topic uh, still not really managed well by the companies. So at this point, I would like to thank you all uh, for your time. I hope this was informative. Uh, we will be following up. Uh, we will send you the webinar recording. I do hope to see you again in the near future. And please feel free to reach out to us if you have any additional questions, if you would like a one on one presentation or a more thorough demo of DPM. So, again, Tim, thank you very much for being here. It was uh, really rich with a lot of detail, and um, there's a lot of conversations that can come from it, and we're here to help. Yes, I agree. So, thank you very much, everyone. Have a really nice day. Have a nice weekend, and I hope to see you again soon.